There's a good book that I would recommend reading called uh, The Great Leveler by Walter Scheidel. It's a new book, relatively new book. And he details out the, he details out the ineradicability of inequality. So part of the problem with this process that we just described, where success breeds success and failure breeds failure, is that the people who are succeeding get a disproportionate share of the resource pie, let's say. Um, so, and you know, everyone knows that about money, right? Because the 12 richest people in the world, the 85 richest people in the world have as much money as the bottom 2 billion, which seems, well, let's say unfair. Now, it's certainly unequal. Now, whether it's I, I unfair, believe, it's Jordan, the statistic is the eight, eight richest have equal to the bottom 3.5 billion. Yeah, well, it's probably worse than it was when I looked at this about three years ago. So, but it, do, it doesn't matter because you, you, you get the point. But, but it's, um, it's but crazy. But the thing is, is that this is not something that only applies to money. It applies to everything that's creatively produced. So the same rule applies to number of records sold by recording artists. The same rule applies to number of books sold by novelists. The same rule applies to number of goals scored by NHL hockey players. The same rule applies to the population of cities and the mass of stars and the size of trees in the, in the jungle. It's like the inequality problem is way more troublesome, again, than mere capitalism. It's a terrible problem. And Scheidel's work, which is really, really interesting, he's traced back inequality 10, 15,000 years. Using, you can do it, for example, let's say you find a Neolithic burial site and there's 200 people in it. So these people would be buried with their possessions. And obviously some of them decay, but some of them don't. And like some of them are buried with gold. Well, hardly any of them. And the tiny proportion of people who are bu buried with gold are buried with a lot of gold. So you can even derive a Gini coefficient estimate, which is an estimate of inequality from burial sites. And it looks like as soon as you get a surplus, you get inequality. And that's a rough thing, eh? Because you might think, well, even in hunter-gatherer societies where there's no surplus, there's still inequality because there's inequality of friendship, there's inequality of health, and there's inequality of sexual access. And those things are, they are not trivial. But when you're thinking about it purely economically, you start to get inequality as soon as you get a surplus. You think, oh, that's interesting. So there's a natural rule, which is Surplus generates inequality. All right, so how do you solve that? And Scheidel's book says, well, that's easy. You just get rid of the surplus. Right, and that's not good. So like he, he found, and so one of the things he did was statistical analysis, because one of the things he might ask is, well, let's say you have your measures of inequality, and then you can track them around the world, and you can track whether or not the inequality is generated by a right-wing government or a left-wing government. And then you might hope, well, the left-wing governments would ameliorate inequality. There's no evidence for that at all. It doesn't look like inequality is with... It, it doesn't look like the amelioration of inequality is within the purview of political organization. Yeah. And, and you, should, like, you should not hear that with any degree of happiness whatsoever, because the social science on inequality is also clear. As inequality levels increase, societies destabilize. And the best indicator yeah. of that, I already mentioned that, that was work that was done by... Um, oh, Martin Daly and Margot Wilson at McMaster University in, in Canada, they're really interested in what drove male homicide, because most homicide is male, male on male, it's mostly young males, it's mostly within race, and it's mostly status competition, right? So, and the status competitions get intense where inequality increases. So where everyone's poor, so if you rank order American states and Canadian provinces by inequality, the poorer provinces where everyone's poor, there's no male aggression. And the rich provinces and states where everyone's rich, there's no male, male homicide. But the states and provinces where inequality is high, the male homicide rate starts to climb up. And it's probably the most aggressive males who get most aggressive most rapidly when inequality increases. So there's a psychological component, but inequality drives male homicide. 0.9 is the correlation which means that you actually don't need any other explanation for male homicide. Maybe you throw in alcohol just, just as, a, as an extraneous variable. You don't need any other explanation for the male homicide rate than inequality. It's a staggering work. It's absolutely staggering work. And so the, the thing is, is that a meritocracy will drive inequality. And then you have a problem because people stack up at zero, and they can't get out of zero. Because that's what happens as inequality increases. People think about when you're playing Monopoly, you know, the game. I mean, that's a perfect example of how inequality emerges. Everybody's equal to begin with. 
Everybody basically plays a random game, because Monopoly is basically a random game. I mean, there's some skill in it, but not much. So, so it's a random game. So what happens when everyone starts equal and you play a random game? One person ends up with everything. Everyone else stacks up at zero. Now, Scheidel's book basically shows the only way out of that is various forms of war, including revolution, and epidemics. That's it. That's the only thing he's been able to track. That, and, and what happens is, well, you level everyone, and then inequality decreases. It's like, well, mm. okay. Mm. Like, <laughs> that doesn't seem like a really great solution.